All engine fire push button switches check in and guarded. Agent 1 and Agent 2 lights out. Engine 1 test. Engine fire push button light red. Squib light and discharge light on. Engine 1 and 2 fire warning on the ECAM plus the continuous repetitive chime and also the master warning light. Fire light on the engine panel will be on. Check for the engine 2 test. It will be the same as the engine 1. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on EBA systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320 Refresher Series Episode 3 Cockpit Preparation This is the third episode of this series to refresh your memory on the normal procedures we perform on a daily basis. Do enjoy this series. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals. This video is merely a guide. And before we start, do destroy the like button, subscribe, and press the notification bell for the latest episode updates. Okay, let us dive in. Let us have a look at the panel scan sequence. The CM1 area of responsibility will be around this part. And this is the CM2 area of responsibility. And thereafter, the pilot flying area of responsibility. Let us take a moment and have a look at the procedure. It looks rather long. At the same time, with the proper flow and sequence, we would cover all of the items. It is a general rule to turn off all white lights for all the systems during the scan sequence. Let us start from the left side overhead panel. Crew oxygen on. Recorder ground control on. Let us check out the CVR test. CVR test press. An audio test signal and a beep every 4 seconds should be heard through the loudspeakers. The part brake handle must also be on to perform the CVR test. Evac switch set to captain or captain and purser depending on your airline standard operating procedures. Align the IRS, select IR modes to NAV and the alignment lasts approximately 10 minutes depending on the latitude. The aircraft must be stationary, any aircraft movement will automatically restart the IRS alignment. Do not align IRS during engine start or while engines are running. A complete IRS alignment must be performed before the first flight of each day, when there is a crew change, or when the GPS is not available and then its coverage is poor, when the GPS is not available and the expected flight time is greater than 3 hours, when the departure airport is located between latitudes 2 degrees north and 2 degrees south. For a complete alignment, the IR mode selectors must be off for more than 5 seconds, then the flight crew sets the IR selector to NAV. For a fast alignment, the flight crew sets the IR mode to off, then back to NAV within 5 seconds. Strobe switch auto, NAV and logo 1, remaining exterior lights off, seat belts on when refueling is complete, no smoking sign to auto, Emergency exit light selector arm, landing elevation knob auto. Let us move on to the backflow selector. Select low if the number of passengers is below 141. Select norm for all normal operating cases and select high for abnormally hot and humid conditions. Question If the APU is supplying the air conditioning, what is the default setting? If you know the answer, do comment in the section below. Let us look at the ECAM electrical SD page. Battery 1 and battery 2 off, then on. 10 seconds after selecting on, check that both battery currents drop below 60 amperes and continue to decrease. If not, wait until the charging cycle of the batteries is completed before performing this check again. When charging cycle is completed, the batteries are disconnected. All palms on. If the fuel mode selector is in the man position on ground, when the center tank palm 1 and 2 are in the on position, there's a possibility of fuel spillage when there are any hidden failures. All engine fire push button switches check in and guarded. Agent 1 and Agent 2 lights out. Engine 1 test. 
engine fire push button light red Squib light and discharge light on Engine 1 and 2 fire warning on the ECAM Plus the continuous repetitive chime And also the master warning light Fire light on the engine panel will be on Check for the engine 2 test It will be the same as the engine 1 Audio switching rotary selector knob Third occupant audio control panel PA reception knob Select reception This allows cabin crew announcements to be recorded on the CVR For proper recording, set volume at or medium range Maintenance panel Check all lights are off let us move on to the center instrument panel, standby instruments adjust, adjust brightness, check the indicator airspeed, altimeter settings, attitude display, and no flags. Use of the bugs is not recommended. Clock, check time and edges if necessary. Elapsed time at zero, chrono at zero. Anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch on. Okay, let us continue with the pedestal section. ACP or audio control panel INT reception knob out and edges Cockpit door check in accordance with your airline security procedure Switching panel or selectors check at knob Trust levers idle Engine master off Engine mode selector knob Check accumulator pressure is in the green band If required, use the yellow hydraulic electric pump to recharge the brake accumulator Warning, yellow and green hydraulic systems are pressurized from the yellow electric pump. Obtain ground crew clearance before using the electric pump. Park brake on. When one brake temperature is above 500 degrees Celsius, avoid applying the parking brake unless operationally necessary. Brake pressure indicators, check. Landing gear gravity extent, check stowed. TCAS is on standby and set to above. Altitude reporting on. When RVSM operations, select System 1 if Autopilot 1 is used and System 2 if Autopilot 2 is used. RMP on. Green NAV light off. Cell light off. Frequencies tuned. VHF 1 is normally used for ATC. VHF 2 is normally used for ATs and company frequencies or tuned to 1 to 1 decimal 5. VHF3 is normally devoted to ACARS FMGC preparation Do watch my videos on FMGC preparation At electrical power up, the FMGC and FCU run through internal tests Allow enough time, probably about 3 minutes for the test completion Do not press any buttons until the tests are over if the please wait message appears, do not press any MCDU key until the message clears. Glass shield, if this on, select constraint, barrel ref set, check the barrel ref and altitude indications on the PFD and the standby altimeter. Can you tell me what is the maximum difference allowed between both PFDs, difference between the ICs and PFDs, and also difference between mechanical standby altimeter and PFDs? If you know the answer, do comment in the section below. Set arc, set range to show first two waypoint, and if the initial two waypoint is more than 70 degrees from the runway track, it is probably a good idea to select Rose Nav. Viewer R ADF select if required, speed mark window dash, heading word speed, track. FPA push button to heading word speed. Altitude window set the initial expected clearance altitude. Do not engage the auto thrust on the ground as it may generate auto flight, auto thrust off, and warning at engine start. Oxygen mask test warning to prevent hearing damage to ground mechanics connected to the intercom system. Inform them that a loud noise may be heard in the headset when performing this test. Cruise supply push button check on. Off light out. Loudspeaker on. Intercom radio switch to intercom. Press the reset test button in the direction of the arrow. Check that the blinker turns yellow for a short time and then goes black. Hold the reset test push button and press the emergency pressure selector. Check that the blinker turns yellow and remains yellow as long as the emergency pressure selector is pressed. 
Listen for oxygen flow through the loudspeakers. Check that the reset test push button returns to the up position and the N100% selector is in the 100% position. Press the emergency pressure selector again and check that the blinker does not turn yellow. This ensures that the mask is not supplied. On the ECAM door oxygen page, regulated low pressure message check off. It is important that the crew must perform this check after having checked all masks. This ensures that the low pressure valve is open. A low pressure valve failed in the closed position may not be detected during the oxygen mask test due to the residual pressure between the low pressure valve and the oxygen mask. Instrument panels, PFD and ND brightness not set. Check the ND outer ring is set to maximum brightness. Loudspeaker set. Set the loudspeaker knob to around 1 o'clock position. PFD check. When attitude and heading are available, check for correct display such as the indicated airspeed, the FMA, the target altitude, the altimeter readings, VSI, altimeter setting, heading and attitude display. ND check. For correct display heading, initial waypoint, and any VOR ADF indications if required. Let us move on to the ECAM control panel. Check that the cabin pressure page display landing elevation auto to confirm the correct position of the landing elevation knob. Status push button press. Check that any inoperative system displayed is compatible with the MEL. If a maintenance message is displayed, then maintenance action may be due. Check with the maintenance personnel. Last but not least, let's check on the ADIRS. IRS align check is done by the pilot monitoring. Check that the IRS are in NAV mode and the distance between each IRS and FMS position is lower than 5 nautical miles. Confirm on the ND that the aircraft position is consistent with the position of the airport, the SID and any NAV aids. And that's it for this video. I hope you find this video useful. Do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.